you know I'm loving it. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know you loving it. And if you're loving it, you can't get enough of it. Put a hand high, right where the other is. Sit a week, but can't find that quitter with me. It's that bit of sweet literature, that little streets. Walk with the Prince of Peace, see where these footprints lead. Hey, this is Dr. K from my medical school. Today we're going to talk about TTPHUS. So let's get started. So what does TTPHUS stand for? It is thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and hemolytic uremic syndrome. Now to diagnose TTPHUS, there's a classic symptom pen tablet. The first one is fever. Two is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. You can diagnose this by getting some basic lab work. So obtaining a CBC to look at anemia, LDH to look at cell death, LFTs to look at an unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia, a retic count to see the body's response to the anemia, haptoglobin to see that hemoglobin is being shed out or the red blood cells are being opened up, and a peripheral blood smear to look at schistocytes. Also, you should note that there should be thrombocytopenia, as well as neurologic abnormality, such as altered mental status. And finally, there should be renal injury. Now, your classic test question will test this pentad. But realize the pentad occurs very rarely or has a very late onset. So when we actually have these patients in the hospital, you don't need the entire pentad. So what is our current diagnostic criteria? One is a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Two is a thrombocytopenia. If you have these two criteria, you can diagnose TTPHUS. But make sure that you've eliminated any alternate cause for the symptoms that the patient has. Now let's talk about the causes of TTP and HUS. TTP and HUS is caused by infections, drugs, can be idiopathic, meaning we don't know why it occurs, autoimmune diseases, as well as allergenic bone marrow transplants. So let's look in the details of what infections can cause TTPHUS. So first off, know that the shiga toxin is responsible for developing TTPHUS. The classic bacteria tested is E. coli 015787. So if a patient eats a burger and it's not cooked very well, that tends to be the stem of the test question. Also, other shigella species can cause TTPHUS. But the classic symptom associated with an infection, such as these, is diarrhea. So if you see diarrhea in the stem or meet a patient with diarrhea with TTPHUS, it's likely that. In terms of drugs that cause TTPHUS, quinine is known to cause it. It used to be an antimalarial. Mitomycin, a chemotherapy agent. Teclopidine, which is an antiplatelet agent. And clopidogrel, or Plavix, another very common antiplatelet agent used if patients have had an MI or an acute coronary syndrome. Now, there are also autoimmune causes as well. The autoimmune causes include scleroderma, polyarteritis nodosa, as well as SLE, or otherwise known as lupus. And these can also lead to TTP and HUS. Bone marrow transplant can lead to TTP and HUS as well, but sometimes it's difficult to exclude infection versus TTP and HUS in those cases. It can also be idiopathic, meaning we don't know why TTP HUS incurs in certain patients. There are also mimics of TTP and HUS. So one would be sepsis, so severe infections can cause this. Two, HIV infection can lead to similar symptoms. And three, malignant hypertension, because you can get a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia with that as well. The treatment of TTP HUS is plasma exchange. To do plasma exchange, you're going to need an apheresis catheter. An apheresis catheter is a double lumen catheter that is an extremely wide bore. So if you ever put in a central line before, an apheresis catheter, instead of single dilation, requires double dilation. No, avoid transfusions unless you have a life-threatening bleed. So sometimes uh, if you request a surgeon to put in the apheresis catheter, they'll ask you to transfuse platelets greater than 50,000. That's ridiculous. You just can't do that in someone with TTP HUS. So it's okay to go ahead and put it even if their platelets are very, very low. Now, what exactly is plasma exchange? So let's talk about that a little bit. So imagine a blood vessel here, and in your blood you have plasma and then your cell components present. So plasma exchange separates your plasma from the actual cellular components. So we take fresh frozen plasma, that means plasma from other people who do not have TTPHUS, and we transfuse it, we instill that into your body along with the cellular components, and we get rid of your plasma. 
And then this new fresh frozen plasma plus your cellular components we inject back into your body. Now what happens if you don't respond to apheresis? Well, one, you can increase the frequency of the plasma exchange, or two, you can give steroids. And generally most people respond with those treatments. In terms of long-term care and transitioning people out of the hospital, we start decreasing the frequency of the plasma exchange to see if their counts stabilize. And then we just do frequent monitoring because people with TTP HUS have a, can develop chronic kidney disease as well as relapses and recurrence. All right, so that's a brief review of TTP and HUS. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like. Make sure to share this video on both Facebook and uh, Twitter with your friends. If you have any comments about this video or suggestions for any future videos, make sure to place the comments down below. And most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from my medical school. I'll see you next time.